Hello everyone and welcome to IntelliPad's live webinar on how to become a data science expert from non-IT background. Today's webinar is conducted by Mr. Shivam. Shivam comes with 12 years of IT experience. He started as an ERP consultant and has been a seasoned data scientist for the last 11 years. Having worked, having worked with McKinsey and other Fortune highly ranked MNCs, he is currently working as an ML advisor for one of the leading firms in the world. He has been teaching and mentoring budding data scientists all over the world for the last 10 years. So, welcome, sir. You can uh, move on with the session now. Thank you. Thank you so much. Hey, hello, everyone. Good evening and good morning to my PST or EST friends. <clears throat> okay. Okay, so before we start the session, right? I I just lay, let's say lay some ground rules. I think they have already given my introduction. Um, I am currently let's say working with a with a social networking company where I lead their uh, uh, major recommendation system of how things should flow in there. Now, what to expect from this session, right? What to expect from the session? So this session is let's say more of around you know uh, people who have somewhere heard this term called as data science or machine learning or AI or deep learning somewhere, right? And they want to pursue their careers inside this, but they don't have any background of how to, let's say, process this information. How to, let's say, how do I see myself in this career? What will be my roles and responsibilities and how do I achieve to that pillar, right? Uh, what should I do so that I can reach out at the correct position, right? At my required destination where I can reach out. Now, the first thing that I want to clarify, you know, you might have heard of these four terms, data science, machine learning, deep learning, and artificial intelligence, right? So the first and the foremost thing is let's correct ourselves that these four are totally different terms, right? And somewhere in literature on internet, you might have read these terms being interchangeably used, right? That's the first thing that we need to make sure that we understand what are the correct cohorts in which you can work upon. So if I, if I open up my board, right, and I try to explain you in very simple terms, these are the four things that you will, you will learn uh, going forward, right? Data science, then the next one is machine learning, and the next one is deep learning, and the next one is AI. Now, the first and the foremost thing that you have to understand is that these four are different things and pursuing career in all of these four is going to be totally different, right? So they are not the same thing. We'll talk about them one by one. The first term is called as data science. Now, most of you might think that this is a very relatively new term, like 2004, 2005, where this thing came up. No, that's actually wrong. Data science is as old as you can think about numbers, right? Data science is not new. That's the first thing that you need to establish in your mind. Data science is as old. Now, what is data science? As the term says, data and science, it means any kind of a science when applied on data to generate insights, that thing is called as data science. Data science is nothing, let's say, very uh, charismatic or let's say any magical thing. No, it is just simply calculating insights from the data. Now, you might think that what is insight or how useful is this insight? I'll give you a very basic example. Let's say I am the CEO of the company, right? And I run a, let's say, Fortune 50 company. And we, are, we are a FMCG. We have multiple products, right? From groceries um, to, let's say, healthcare and then consumer cosmetics. We are everywhere, right? Like your Hindustan Unilever or let's say your Procter & Gamble, company like this. Now, I want to know which is our best performing product. So what will you do? You'll actually go around in the data, right? You'll see our last one year performance. You'll check for every product, how they are doing in each country, right? You'll group all the countries and you'll say, this is the most selling product that we have. This is the most profitable product that we have, correct? You'll try to be giving these answers. Now, what you did, you went in the historical data and you did some kind of a mathematics on it, some kind of a science on it. That is called as data science. And you empowered the CEO with the answer that let's say product B, is the most profitable product and product A was the most selling product. Now I can make strategies, the CEO or the CFO or the CMO can make strategies based on these decisions, right? Based on the insights that you get. This is called as data science. 
Now, the second point is that is it always doing some aggregations and plus minus? No, this is the basic that I'm giving an example, right? This can go to the science on the data, can go to simple mathematics to let's say some kind of simulations or statistical or let's say probabilistical probabilistic models also being built on the data. That is called as data science. Correct? Everything clear here? Nothing very fancy. Just when you went, when you go inside the historical data, you try to tell the insights from that data. Now, if I take the same data, right, and I'd say to you that no, we will not just let's say limit ourselves to prediction. I want you to predict the future for me, right? Predict the future for me. Now, what is this predict the future for me? Again, same. I am the CEO of the same company, right? And let's say. Uh, you know, I am asking you that based, tell me what is the sales going to be for the Feb month, right? What is the sales for our cosmetics division going to be in Feb, the month of Feb? So what you are trying to do is you're trying to predict the price of that cosmetic product in Feb, which has still not happened. So you're doing what? You're doing prediction. That is what exactly, let's say, we do with machine learning. Now, you might think this is very glorious, right? I mean... If you can predict the future, you're almost like a god, right? Uh, actually, no, you're not a god. You're just a simple observer. I have a question for you, right? I'm going to draw a graph and I'm going to ask you a question. This is how the graph looks like. You tell me now, where will this graph go? Will it go down or will it go up? Hmm? Up or down? Any Suggestion simple. This is simply a graph between two, let's say, uh, two values. My question is based on this graph that you see, right? Now I'm asking you a question will it go up or down? Very good. It will go down. Very good. Why, why is everyone suggesting down? I'll tell you why. Because you saw the historical pattern. Because you saw historically, this is how the data goes, right? Up, down, then it goes up, then down, then up, and down. Based on that, what you said, you predicted that it was going to go down. This is what exactly machine learning does. Machine learning takes in account your historical, let's say data, right? Historical performances, it will consider, right? And based on that, it will try to find some patterns in the data. And it will apply the same pattern to the future. Like you did, you saw a historical pattern and then you applied and you said it will go down. Similarly, machine learning also finds these patterns from the historical data and applies it to the Next, future. Now, machine learning is so, you, you, most of you think, oh, wow, that's, that's so wonderful, right? That machine learning is going good. That is exactly what machine learning is doing. And this is what exactly people do in their businesses also. Now, there's one issue with machine learning that machine learning works very good with numerical data, or if I could say, let's say it works very good for tabular data. What is tabular data? Tabular data means any data which can be represented in rows and columns. Products are in the rows, sorry, uh, products are in the columns and let's say their daily performances are in the rows, right? Let's say this is product one, this is product two and their daily sales we are recording, let's say first of Jan, uh, right? Second of Jan, we are recording all these things into detail, right? So this is tabular data, right? Now tabular, it, it works very well. Machine learning algorithms, they work really well on tabular data. Why? because they are they they actually use something called as mathematical algorithms all these algorithms are mathematical algorithms to find the pattern so they work very good on numerical data or tabular data now i know there's a question in your mind which is coming that shivam is the data in other format also right everything is numbers only can any one of you tell me that any kind of data which is not in the format of numbers Anyone, any idea if the numbers, very good. Exactly. Unstructured data, let's say images, very good. Like images, videos, right? Speech, when I'm saying something like speech or text, these cannot be numerical, right? I know companies, let's say performance can be written in, let's say numbers, right? But for the same company, when you are recording the call center, let's say calls, those calls are not in numerical format, right? So at this particular time, right, comes your deep learning. Deep learning says that I will also try to predict something, but it will be non-tabular or something called as cognitive data, right? 
cognitive data cognitive data means that the data for which processing the human requires the sense of organs your eyes your ears or your or your uh, mouth right any if any kind of let's say uh, sensory organs is being required to process the data that data is called as cognitive data and deep learning came into picture it said that we will handle the unstructured part of data the images the videos the speech and this is called as deep learning now deep learning are not based on mathematical algorithm they are based on how human kid evolves so let's say there's a small kid how does the kid understand that this is a cat this is a dog right on the same neuron behavior this thing this deep learning is built on and you might uh, let's say agree also this thing is also called as neural networks the word neural where does it comes from it comes from humans only right how humans try to learn something the same way we are mimicking it and we are trying to make a model for our machines also understood till now data science then machine learning then deep learning and now we are going to talk about ai what is ai then we have done everything right for right from calculating insights till predicting now ai is end to end you know product when you make when you make a end to end product e to e when you make a e to e product that product is called as ai enabled artificially intelligent product now this product can use multiple deep learning algorithms it can use machine learning algorithms it can use data science it can sometimes use static codes also right but when you make a end to end product that product is called as artificially intelligent product i'll give you an example how many of you you use gmail for your day to day activities you're like i use gmail for my day to day activities right very good okay almost all of you use this thing right when you compose a email right when you compose a email you might see that it is it tries to predict the next word for you right or let's say tries to compose the mail for you i'm showing you an uh and gif here i hope you all can see this thing right so let's say this email is being built right the user says that taco tuesday as the subject line right and they write down hey jacqueline and after that you see that google is now trying to predict what the email can be haven't seen you in a while so if you say let this jeff repeat and i'll and i'll go with the email let's see for every word it's it's going to predict the sentence right does next tuesday works for you right see say around 6 right see it's trying to predict all these thing what is this this is artificially intelligent product right this is what artificially intelligent product now this product is it can be made up of multiple deep learning machine learning algorithms and multiple other things correct very good let's come back to our screen so okay all of you understood what is the data science then machine learning then deep learning and then ai right so everybody is fine with this term the question that we have is how do i achieve this thing right how do i achieve this thing so let me do one thing let me delete this up and then we'll try to fill in this okay actually let's not delete this stuff let's keep it out of this and we'll try to fill this up okay so what is the first thing which i told you data science is what calculating insights right calculating insights out of data now you tell me if somebody has to calculate insights from data what is the first thing that they have to do forget about insights and all these things the first thing that you have to do is you should know how to read the data correct now what do you think all these big giant companies let's say amazon amazon is let's say almost doing 1000 transactions in india per second right at let's say any uh, festive day they are doing more than 1000 transactions per second in india right and on a given weekend or a given um, uh, holiday right so just imagine where are they saving all this data any any answers where are they saving all these kinds of details in a text file no in a excel excel has a limit just to tell you excel has a limit of 100000 records it cannot get the net go cannot go beyond that thing right so well, dbs exactly databases very good database is a enterprise let's say solution where you can store your data right it is retained it has retention over there it has protection over there they make multiple backups of it it's the most 
efficient way of saving your data. So the first thing that you need to do is my friends, if you want to build your career in data science is that you need to learn how to read data, right? And to read data, you need to learn something, a language called as SQL. The first thing that you have to need to do is learn SQL. SQL is a language that you will need to talk to your databases. Very simple, not very difficult language and very intuitive language to learn about, right? Okay, so once you have read the data, data is with you, then you'll do what? You need to do some aggregations, you need to do some numerical calculations, plus, minus, division, right? All these things you'll do. So you need a kind of a platform where you can do all these data operations, correct? Now, these can be done in two ways. Either you can learn a programming language, something like R or Python, or you can say that I don't know, I don't understand languages. So you can actually go for a no coding platform like Alteryx. Right? Alteryx is a no coding platform where you can go and you can drag and drop all these things. Okay, very good. So now what you've done is you have read the data, you have done all the manipulations, you did a group buy on products, and you did a let's say a summation across the countries. And then you told us that this is the you did an order buy, and then you gave us that okay, this country has the, this product has the largest potential. Very good. Now you'll do what? You'll go and you'll show this, let's say, Alteryx workflow, or let's say you'll show this Python code to your VP or your CFO, correct? No. Your CFO does not understand Python. Your CFO does not understand R. Your CFO does not understand SQL, anything, right? Your CFO just understands simple answers. So you need to learn how to represent your data, represent your results. So what you'll do? Obviously communication is one thing. Obviously you need to have a good communication skill. That's a soft skill that everybody should have, not just data scientist, but everybody should have. Exactly, visualization. The third thing is visualization. People need to learn that how to visualize their results in the most simplistic manners, right? Visualizations, or I can say dashboards, right? So for dashboard, you have a Power BI, or you can use something called as Tableau also over there, correct? These are the three first steps that you need to learn if you want to make your career in data science or data analyst. You want to become a data analyst in any company, right? These three things you should know. Now you might say to me that Shivam, okay, I, let's say this looks very easy to me. I want to jump to this machine learning part. So what extra is in machine learning? Machine learning, you need to learn algorithm, right? You need to first of all learn mathematics, basic mathematics like linear algebra, um, I'll write down linear. Linear algebra is first thing that you need to learn, right? Not very expensive mathematics, but let's say very basic mathematics of linear algebra. Second thing is you need to learn these algorithms, machine learning algorithms, and definitely you need to learn a programming language. Now you cannot do, let's say without programming language, you cannot do machine learning. So you need to learn R or Python, any one programming language, right? Uh, ML algorithms and maths. Now you say, Shivam, no, I am more optimistic. I can do, let's say I want to do deep learning. So the first thing that you need to learn is you need to learn advanced mathematics now. I am saying advanced, but this is, let's say, I mean, you all have done it in your high school elementary mathematics, high school mathematics also, calculus, differentiation, integration. Uh, you need to understand what is metrics, what is arrays, operation on them, vectors, right? Those kinds of things are required over here. Second thing is you need to learn what is a neural network topology, right? How a human brain works. How do we try to mimic that thing? And then you need to bring it in your deep learning. This is a, obviously a very big uh, topic here that you need to learn, right? And then once you go to AI, you will say that you need to learn how to deploy a you need to learn how to deploy a machine learning algorithm or let's say machine learning application, right? You need to learn something called an MLOps. But this is let's say way, way advanced, right? You should not go there. You should let's just stick to your uh, first stage of data science and machine learning. Obviously, I am not discouraging you to start your deep learning career or AI career. Obviously, no, you should go and um, see yourself as there. But obviously, I'll say that you can start your career with data science, slow and steady, and then go to machine learning and deep learning. Correct? Any questions still here? 
no how can you save this oh so this sheet is already there okay so if you go right all these sheets are already there inside the presentation right i can show you just one second uh and so you see here for requirements we have written all the educational requirements which are here what are roles and responsibilities what is the skill set see i told you right programming mathematics machine learning linear algebra data intuition data wrangling and then this is uh, based on how important everything is you have let's say listed all these uh, things over there correct now obviously everybody is doing the job for uh, because data science gives you much thing right but before you come to numbers right i want to tell you one thing to every one of you right you are switching your careers and you all are thinking of switching to data science right that's a very good thing but don't leave your current job the one good thing in data science is that data science can be applied to almost any domain it can be healthcare pharmaceutical uh, procurement right uh, it can be agriculture it can be uh, clothing i'll i'll tell you my career right i started with a very 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 um, let's say procure uh, sorry uh, manufacturing heavy company right it was a manufacturing heavy company then i went to a more of a logistics based company then i went to a management consulting firm there where i worked for procurement and then i worked for social networking website and now these days i'm working for a for a apparel industry fashion right so data science is almost everywhere almost everywhere right so i would suggest to all of you that my friends stick to your particular domain wherever you are right and use that particular domain and let's say demensify it with using data science the first very big thing that i see people is that people will say that okay i have a very good career in my let's say healthcare sector i'll leave it why because i want to pursue data science so my friend why don't you look out for data science in healthcare right why why are you thinking that when you wasted some people say i wasted my 12 years in healthcare no you never wasted it you have that something called as sme power sme is what subject matter expert see data science is not just about putting a algorithm into place data science is about solving a problem and until you understand until and unless you don't understand the domain right you cannot work on top of it that's the first thing and then obviously you can look out for let's say these numbers over here they are written here as a 10 lpa for a junior and senior as a 20 lpa over there right so these numbers look very promising and they are and they are uh, I, i can tell you i am at the industry side i have been at both the places uh, giving the interviews and taking the interviews and the space is very interesting that's one thing i can say i obviously money is obviously there but this is more interesting things where you are trying to solve with data that's that's my part over there now because see it is made up of multiple let's say concepts right sql python r data science, um, data visualization power bi tableau right intellipad offers you multiple let's say small packages over there where you can customize your these things and you can try to let's say make up your own journey around it correct that's what intellipad is going to help you uh, and get you surfaced over there right but before i end up right and i give it to my friend who is going to explain you more about in this uh, let's say how can you start your own career inside this thing and how can you start your own learning right before you start all these things and before i give it to my friend my question is do you have any question for me do you have any myth question that you think that i want to understand this or about data science machine learning any 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 of the four terms right that you think you can ask me any domain where you think that can you give me a use case i can help you with that also if you have any question open up any no questions okay okay there is one can you give me a use case of healthcare yes definitely healthcare is i mean see one thing which i want to tell you is that when you say healthcare industry right let's take an example of let's say pfizer pfizer is let's say one of the healthcare companies right now pfizer's main job is to make let's say obviously these uh vaccines these pills right but they still have a sales department they still have a hr department they still have a finance department so do, don't just think that healthcare means that okay i have to work with medicines only and these things no yeah, healthcare also has a financial division healthcare also has a sales division that's the first thing second thing i'll tell you i have never worked very largely into healthcare but i worked for a client 
for a for a European client there. And I'll tell you, the use case was very simple. I can tell you. These companies, right? These companies are not new companies. These are my client was a very old company, right? And since last 50, 60 years, right? They have been saving all 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 over. Let's say their R and D that they have been doing, right? They have been saving them into PDFs. Now their question said that Shivam, we have so many resources, right? But we do not have the power to utilize them. I mean, these PDFs are lying here and there, right? These PDFs are not searchable. Everybody has to read all those, let's say, documents and all these things. Can you, let's say, using machine learning and and not all, let's say, uh, research is inside digital PDF. They can be, let's say, some printouts also. And uh, those printouts, we can scan these printouts for you if you want. So I said, yeah, scan these, all these things for me. So now what I have is I have, let's say, almost 10 million PDFs with me. And my job is to, let's say, make a system where it be, it makes their life easier. Now, see, there is there's a problem only. They never will tell you the solution. It's you who has to develop the solution. So I'll tell you what I did. I took all the PDFs and I made my own custom OCR model. OCR is that let's say you show it an image and it can tell you what the text is written over there. I made a custom, let's say OCR for those healthcare company, right? And I converted all those 10 million PDFs into a searchable text format and everything was stored inside a database. And every PDF was given a tag, like major metadata was stored there. So let's say when this document was, uh, let's say made, what is the major theme of the document? Is it a R&D document or is it a final document? What, uh, let's say, uh, pill it is talking about, is it like R13456 or R13956, right? Is it a, I mean, so the days of multiple tagging, right? We did multiple tagging. So let's say tomorrow, if you're starting a new project, let's say you're you, you are starting a new project for, let's say, some kind of an enzyme called as R123. So you can just quickly go into that particular system that I made, right? And I entered R123 and I can see all the previous documents which are there five years ago, 10 years ago, 20 years ago. 30 years ago, right? And I, I can see all these things in front of me, right? Data science is all about solving a problem, right? I can see one very good question here, which says that uh, can a non-IT person learn Python or SQL language? How easy or difficult it is? I'll try to answer this question with an example. So when COVID started, right? Uh, one of the lady joined my course uh, and I was teaching artificial intelligence, machine learning over there in that particular course, right? Uh, she joined my session. She was an HR specialist that part, that particular time because she had some time, spare time to learn, right? She said that I want to learn something. So she started machine learning with no intention to do anything, right? Just to learn. Once the course was completed, right? She was very much into the course and she said that, Shivam, I have done all these things. Now I don't want to waste my time. I want to, let's say, pursue this ahead. So what should I do? I said, do practice. Now we have multiple platforms like Kaggle, right? Where all the people are giving, companies are giving you free data and you can solve their problems. So I said, do that. Now she said, I am a HR. I, I, I don't know any domain or anything. I said, see, HR is also a domain. Now there's a problem in HR field, which is called as human iteration. It means employees, when they join you, they'll also leave you, right? Now let's say if I tell you that if for every employee, I can tell you that whether they, they're going to leave in next 45 days, yes or no how that model will be. She read about it. What is, uh, she already knew what is um, uh, employee rate, uh, let's say iteration, right? But she made a model on top of it. And that model performed with almost 73% precision. 73% precision. She showed that particular model to her company and the company was impressed because they were able to retain people now, right? They already, the managers already knew that this particular resource was very dependable, right? He's very dependent on the project. This, if this resource leaves, we are all messed up, right? So if they already know in the future that this person is going to leave, what they'll do is they'll start poaching that particular, let's just start reaching out to that particular, let's say, uh, employee, and they'll try to resort this out. She made that one, and, I'll, and I'm very proud to say that today that she is the analytics head in org domain in her own company. Same position. So if you're trying to say that you are a non-engineer, non-tech person, yes, I can tell you, I can tell you multiple the success stories where people from non-mathematical background did clear everything. The important point is, do you really envy this area? Right, that's the most important thing. Another question that I see on chat is that I am a retired person since last two years. I want to make a career in BI, not good mathematics background. How can I go ahead? That's a very good question. And if you see here, my friend, if you are not good at mathematics, 
data science is a good field for you, all right? Or data analytics, if I say. Data analytics is a good field for you. Here you can see that in the prerequisites, you require SQL, you require a no coding platform and a visualization, correct? And BI is what? BI is business intelligent, same, uh, almost let's say same as a data analytics person. So I think for you, the big thing is that you need to learn how to read SQL first thing, and then any easy, let's say visualization thing like Power BI or Tableau, correct? Again, I would say that those of you who, who fear mathematics, right? Don't fear mathematics. Mathematics is not as scary as it looks like. Like once you, once you let's say, come up and once you understand, right? Why this mathematics is happening. All things, let's say, will resolve. Correct? Any further questions? Any further questions regarding domain and regarding your... Uh, any career question that you have, anything, right? I'll try to answer that one. Otherwise, I'll call my friend who can explain you that how you can navigate your path further um, with us. Okay, I am a civil engineer, yes. Okay, so okay, if I understand your question, your question is that uh, how can I see career inside civil engineer. Okay. That's a very good domain because I have never got somebody from civil domain to come up. Right. But tell me how often do you work with numbers? Right. How often do you work with numbers over there? Wherever there is numbers, right. Data science can be there. I'll tell you. So I have not worked in like core uh, civil engineering, but I can tell you, I work for a manufacturing plant. Right. What happened is there was a quality assurance issue. It means that whenever let's say a product is coming out, right. I was working at a bottling plant. So all these cans are manufactured that you drink, right? Your Coke, your uh, Pepsi, wherever you drink and it comes into a Coke, right? So, sorry, it comes into a can, right? So I, I used to work for this company which used to make these cans and it was a bottling plant. Now the company was having a problem that their cans were, let's say, were having a very bad quality. And once the products were made, then only they were able to assess this thing, whether it is good or bad. So they said that Shivam, we are losing a lot of money. Almost 19% of our made cans. So let's say out of every 100 can, 19 cans get rejected. Can we capture this information very early? That this can is not going to be good can. Can we drop this earlier at a very earlier stage so that we can save time and money both? I said, yes, why not? We made a system over there and see sensors and I mean, sensors are my best friend over there. These sensors were there and they were giving me all the data through which I could, let's say, judge that at this particular site that this can is not going to make it the quality issue. And we, we used to remove that can already. And you know, after my model, out of every 100 can, only three were rejected. Earlier it was 19, now only three were rejected. So we are saving time and energy both by doing this thing. Correct? You just need to do a very simple, let's say, uh, Right. See, anal um, analytics, uh, analytics in agriculture, analytics in pharma, analytics in China, healthcare, financial services, in HR. It's 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 almost everywhere. If I see in civil engineering, if I do right, let's see what are the use cases that come up in construction and civil services. You'll see that multiple use cases are there. Let's open this up. What does this document say? And now see, this document is not now. This document is almost three years old, four years old. Just one second, it loads up. My point is being self-aware is very important in data science. Correct? So why isn't it opening up? It opened up, right? So okay, this is a document from CMU where it says that how can you use a uh, civil engineering and environmental engineering all together, right? See, this thing already exists. What is the difference between data science and business specialist? See, business analyst is somebody who is very focused to answering the questions that come and help the business, right? Business analyst is what? Business analyst is somebody who understands business also and who understands the data science part of it also. So I'll tell you, I also became a business analyst up a lot later, right? So I started my career as a data scientist, somebody who knows only technical information. I never knew about business, right? 
but slowly 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 i moved into business also and at one point you know both you know business also and you know science also this is where and that's the best combination also you need to merge both the things over there correct so see let's see here the first one is enhancement insight into future initiatives which i think is very uh, next right that is use this one improved analysis of past initiatives okay so this is this is a good one right so you can assess your previous let's say based on the previous projects that you have done right you can try to assess them and you can try to use these learnings inside your next project it gives you an example also of how the hong kong international airport was uh, generating this thing right refined construction planning modeling and tracking oh yes construction uh, not but yes uh, for model uh, for refineries i from the word refined i got to know refineries right i worked for a steel plant also and asian um, and southeast asian uh, steel manufacturing plant i worked there same again i was working on increasing the quality of the steel produced over there of transportation scm is there you know supply chain management is also over there but i know civil has very less to do with that thing but i think these two things are very good right try to figure out these use cases my friend that is going to be the best for you any other question that you have otherwise our friend is going to walk you through and Hi guys, my name is Nidhi. I'm I'm from the admissions uh, department here. I'm an admissions counselor, and my role itself is to you know um, help you in deciding the best courses uh, for your upskilling and your career growth. Now, I believe um, our trainer Shivam has already given a brief insight about you know what data science is all about and what is data analytics, right? So let's talk about the courses here now. just one second i'll just share my screen all right so i'm hoping that you guys can see my screen right now okay now we are on the intellipath website now um let's talk about the courses that are available okay on our website when you just type data science in the search bar all right you'll see multiple you know search results here on the website let's click on the first course advanced certification in data science and ai okay now firstly uh, see data science is a very good option to pick up why because it does not have any prerequisites in terms of prior knowledge experience or academic background as such and even if you come with zero knowledge here at intellipath we are going to teach you from the basics only and then we take you to the intermediate and advanced level of training having said that of course uh, i'm sure you guys understand by now that you know data science has the highest number of job opportunities right now in the it sector and thirdly it is also one of the highest paid job roles not only in india but also abroad now the course that i would recommend for a person who actually wants to have a smooth transition to data science as a field irrespective of the work experience you know whether the person is a fresher or comes with 3 5 years of experience or even 15 to 20 years experience for that matter the course i would recommend is the advanced certification in data science and ai now the best part of this course is that this course is designed in collaboration with iit madras why iit madras because see data science does not have any governing body correct so obviously you need to have a globally valid certificate in order to differentiate yourself from lot of other institutes which are offering this course right so the iit madras course completion certificate which you get is a verified digital certificate globally valid industry recognized now not only the certificate even the content is designed in collaboration with iit madras so you're not only getting an industry recognized certificate you're also getting an industry recognized content also the course duration is 7 months and the batch timings are saturday sunday 8 to 11 in the evening it's a fixed weekend batch that you are getting now i'm sure you know that you know when it comes to any it related technologies iits have the highest recognition in the job market correct plus iit madras is ranked as number 1 by the nrf ranking also so you are getting the training from a reputed and a premium institute like iit madras so the you know uh, learning experience will be quite pleasant 
okay now uh, let's talk about the course curriculum first just one second we have to just scroll down okay click on curriculum you see there are total 13 modules <clears throat> the first 10 modules are you know uh, mentioned in the blue color dot which is nothing but live course which means live online uh, classes and the green color is for self-paced self-paced meaning pre-recorded lecture videos no live lectures so now let's talk about the curriculum module number one is a preparatory session on python and linux now why python because see the foundation of python should be very very strong for a person who is aspiring to become a data scientist professional right so we are giving you the foundation classes first so that you are prepared for the future modules module number two is git <clears throat> git is an advanced devops tool which is also widely used by data scientists and machine learning engineers Module number three is Python for data science. Now, why uh, again Python? Why are we stressing so much on Python is because, see, Python is the most trending and the most popular programming language in today's world. Almost 80% organizations are using Python as a programming and analytical tool. And the benefit of learning Python is Python is very easy to understand from a syntax point of view. It is not as tough as Java or any other language. Okay, module number, uh, so all the libraries of Python will be covered over here. Like, you, you know, you see NumPy, Oops, Concepts, the SciPy, all these, uh, you know, concepts will, libraries will be covered in depth. Module number four is advanced statistics, which is of course a requirement for data scientists and data analysts also. Module number five is machine learning. And seven is AI and deep learning. Now, why are we covering module number five and seven, machine learning and AI? Because see, as a data scientist, you also need to know the advanced concepts of automation, correct? So concepts like logistic regression, linear regression, decision tree, random forest, artificial neural networks, Keras APIs, TF Learn APIs, multi-layered neural networks, all these things will be taught to you. Okay, so machine learning will be taught using Python and deep learning will be taught using TensorFlow. Module number six, which is data science at scale with PySpark. This is nothing but the big data Hadoop and Spark module. Now, why are we covering big data also? Because see, big data and data science are interlinked. Tomorrow, if you get placed with the MNC, wherein you also have to process millions of lines of data. So there your knowledge of Hadoop and Spark will be required. Okay. In fact, in this module, we are going a step further. We are also teaching you PySpark. PySpark is nothing but an integration of Python with Spark. Okay. Module number eight is the deployment of the machine learning models on the cloud platform. Now, see, a lot of institutes will teach you what is machine learning, but they don't teach you the deployment part of it. We are covering that as well, which is called as MLOps. Okay, module number nine is data visualization with Tableau. This is nothing but Tableau Desktop 10. Now, Tableau is a business intelligence and reporting tool. And here, whatever analysis you do, it will uh, it will be, uh, you know, uh, uh, represented in graph uh, or chart form, you know, all those things. There will be dashboards, reports, etc. So, Tableau is the number one reporting tool in the market as per Gartner's report. Module number 10 is a capstone project capstone project is nothing but a project wherein you'll apply the knowledge and skills of all the tools and technologies that you have learned so far so these 10 modules will be in live lectures plus you are getting three more modules as complementary but in self-paced self-paced meaning pre-recorded lecture videos no live lectures so in self-paced you're getting microsoft excel you're getting sql now, why SQL? Because see, we are giving you 100% knowledge in data science. So it is important for you to start from zero. So in SQL, which is the database course, you will understand how to pull out data from the database of a company. Okay, so module number 13 is natural language processing. Natural language processing is another important aspect of AI itself, which will be taught using Python. So here you will learn concepts like cleaning, text mining, text classification, etc. So natural language processing will also be taught using Python. So if you see this entire combination of total 13 modules which you are getting, 
it is the perfect combination for a person who is aspiring to become a data scientist professional this is also one of the best selling courses on our website and it will assure you the best job in the data science industry now let's talk about how the course will be conducted for you so we scroll up again on the same page we click on about program and we see uh, there's something written as key highlights i'll just explain the key features of the course <clears throat> so first thing that you see over here is 400 hours of applied learning correct now 400 hours of applied learning is a blend of live lectures recordings of live lectures and a lot of hands-on project work practice work etc so you'll be getting 50 plus live sessions <clears throat> in the next seven months these are live interactive lectures from the trainers the trainers are from the industry itself they carry an average of 10 to 15 years of industry experience uh, with relevant uh, domain experience of minimum eight years in data science Okay, now 40% of the lectures are, uh, you know, will be taken by the IIT Madras professors and remaining will be taken by the industry experts. So basically, you will get best of both the worlds. One, you will get IIT Madras professors and second, you will get industry experts, you know, trainers like, you know, Shivam, or, you know, who explained an overview of data science, you know, people who are already working in the data science field from quite a few years. Okay, now the best part of the live lectures is that whatever lectures you attend, you will also get recordings of the lectures by the next day. So two benefits. One, if you miss a class due to an emergency, you can always go back to the recordings. And second, you might also want to keep revising whatever you're learning, correct? So we will give you recordings of all the classes with lifetime access. You can also revise as many times as you want. Okay, next is 218 hours of self-paced videos. Self-paced videos is nothing but structured pre-recorded lecture videos, again by the same industry experts, which comes with lifetime access. So basically to sum it up, you're getting three things here. One, you're getting live lectures for seven months. Second, you're getting recordings of live lectures with lifetime access. And third, you're getting pre-recorded lecture videos with lifetime access. Okay, now the most significant feature of the program is the project work and exercise. Why? Because you're not only learning, you're also applying what you have learned. So you will know the areas and opportunities for you to grow during the entire program. Okay, so you're getting a total of 50 plus industry projects and case studies. Okay, now firstly, we will make sure that uh, these projects are from different domains like banking, retail, e-commerce, finance, FMCG, etc. Okay, why? Because the role of a data scientist or a data analyst is not restricted just to an IT company. Tomorrow, you might get placed in an international bank like JP Morgan as a data scientist. So we'll give you projects from different industries so that you understand the technology implementation in various industries, not just one. Now, the best part of the project work is that all these projects are real world company projects which means we take these projects from companies and we give it to you for working. We don't give you any dummy data sets or dummy projects to work upon. So the benefit is that the same seven months which you're going to spend on the entire learning experience and the hands-on project work, practice work and the case studies, it will be considered as good as seven months of internship in the data science field. So apart from the course completion certificate, which you're getting, from the Center of Continuing Education, IIT Madras, in collaboration with IntelliPath. Additionally, you will get one internship certificate from our side for working on the 50 plus industry projects and case studies that we're giving you. Now, this internship certificate that you will get, so this is the sample certificate which you will be getting, the course completion certificate. It will be signed uh, by the professor of the Digital Skills Academy, IIT Madras, the chairman of the Center of Continuing Education of IIT Madras, and the founder of IntelliPath. Pad. It comes with a unique certificate number on the top right corner. So, in, you know, it's a collaborated certificate. Why? Because IntelliPad is an authorized learning partner of IIT Madras. In fact, we are we are the only institute in the market right now which is offering a, a you know a course on data science entire with IIT Madras. 
now apart from that like i said you get an internship certificate so that internship certificate you get will add up like a uh, you know work experience on your profile it will add a lot of value to your profile it will highlight your profile even further and of course the knowledge that you get at the end of the program that would be cutting edge okay in terms of the support <clears throat> you see there's something called as 24 by 7 support written over here so in terms of providing you with uh, you know support um, our head office is in bangalore regional office is in us so we have learners from all across the globe 50 percent of the learners are from us and canada as well so our support team works 24 by 7 even if you call them in the night they'll answer your call okay so once you enroll you will get the numbers of the support team members from your admissions counselor or your learning consultant um there are two ways of getting your queries answered one is definitely in the live lecture you can ask your queries directly to the trainer but if you are not in a live lecture and if you still have a query you can reach out to the support team the support team will connect you with a technical expert who can also resolve your queries one on one so we have one-on-one -on -one query resolution as well for our students. In fact, since IIT Madras is a premium institute, we are going a step further. We're also offering you a dedicated personal learning manager. Now, personal learning manager is someone whom you can keep in touch with. Whenever you have any issues or concerns, you just have to reach out to your personal learning manager via call, email or WhatsApp and he or she will try and resolve your queries at the earliest. So this person is like a point of contact for you for any issues that you face in the next seven months of your online education journey with IntelliPad. Okay, now in terms of career services, you see the career services and three guaranteed interviews. To scroll down, click on career services. I'll explain the job assistance and the career services offered by IntelliPad. Okay, now in terms of providing you with job opportunities, firstly, we have a tie up with 400 plus companies across the globe. So what we do initially is, initially we will help you with your resume preparation and your LinkedIn profile update. Once that is done, we will share your resume with different tie-ups that we have. And according to your preferred location of work, let's say your preferred location of work is, you know, somewhere in Bangalore, Chennai, Hyderabad, Delhi, Noida, Gurgaon, Mumbai, Pune, Bangalore. Okay, whenever there is a position which is open, we will notify you and you can go and attend the interview. Now, the best part of our job assistance feature is that we have, we are giving you three guaranteed interviews in our 400 plus hiring partners. Now, of course, you have to dedicate your time and efforts towards learning the technology. You have to master the skills so that you're able to crack the interviews at your end. However, the best assurance we are giving from our side is definitely we will conduct these three guaranteed interviews for you. Now, apart from conducting these interviews, we will also conduct mock interviews. We'll give you interview questions, interview answers, assignments, quizzes, case studies, whatever you need to be prepared with before going for interviews will be provided by us. So you see on the profile building section of career services, we mentioned that the resume and LinkedIn profile building is after 70% of the course completion. Then there is mock interview after 80% of the course completion. There will also be one on one career mentoring session after 90% of the course completion. Then there is job assistance uh, in which you get the guaranteed interviews after 80% of the course completion. Plus you get an exclusive access to the IntelliPad job portal, which also happens after 80% of the course completion. So uh, we have a job portal on which our 400 plus hiring partners are already registered. We'll give you the ID and password of this portal and you can also start applying online. This again ha happens after 80% of the course completion. So if you see here, uh, we have a very structured way of uh, career services that we, you know, that we are dealing with there is a proper format to the career services all right so i believe i have explained you the entire course details i've explained you the key features also of course it is designed for working professionals and uh, you know <clears throat> freshers both we are also providing you with soft skills essential training we have no cost emi option you know with respect to the course fee structure if you want to convert it into emi and plus uh, there is a two days of you know campus immersion which happens at iit madras let me explain this so basically this immersion program will be for two days during the seventh month now, this particular, you know, two days of program, which will happen at IIT Madras campus is completely op optional for the learners. It's not mandatory. So during the two days visit, 
to the IIT Madras campus. You can visit the faculty members. You can interact with them. There will be project demo and hands-on sessions will be conducted for you know two days. You can also peer network with the fellow learners and get an overall experience of the IIT Madras campus learning. Now, the dates of the immersion will be informed at least two months in advance so that you can plan it. All right. And the travel and accommodation uh, will be at the learner's cost and the food will be provided in the campus for both the days. OK, so I believe I, I, I've explained, you know, the uh, uh, curriculum, I've explained, you know, the duration and how the course will be conducted. Again, the batch timings are Saturday, Sunday, 8 to 11 in the evening. So now uh, just the last thing, which is the course fee structure, click on the fees on this page, you see that the total admission fee is 85,000 plus 18% GST, which is 1,352 rupees. Of course, you know, we have no cost EMI options available wherein you can convert this amount into three months, six months, nine months or 12 months of EMI, you know, easy EMIs using either a debit card or a credit card. And let's say if you don't, you know, are if you are not eligible to use a debit card or a credit card for that matter, we also have our financing partners like, you know, Bajaj FinServe, there is Zest Financial Services and quite a few more which you can use, you can submit your documents and get the amount converted into EMI by linking your account with the financing partner. Um, you see uh, the upcoming application deadline is 6th of February. So we're closing the applications, not only for February, we are closing the applications for March as well. Um, so ideally, uh, the seats are given only on first come first serve basis to our interested participants because the course is in high demand and the seats are fast filling. So if you're interested, don't miss out on the opportunity of your you know, seat allocation. How you can reach out to us is you can just come to the this chat window you see on the right side of it right side of the website down corner the live chat you can just mention you know, your name number email id and the course you're interested in and uh, you know someone from the admissions department will get back to you okay about the course and the you know uh, course details and how to uh, enroll and the registration process alternatively there is also a contact number mentioned on which you can directly uh, call us uh, for the course uh, registration. It's here, just one second. Okay, it's not mentioned here. However, I will do one thing. I will, plus see, you can also, you know, mention your full name, number, email ID, click on download curriculum and someone from the uh, admissions uh, team will directly get in touch with you. What I'll do is I will also help you guys with my contact number just in case if you wish to you know <clears throat> get in touch with me directly you can call me on this number okay so my number is 89713499934 okay and my name is nidhi manocha so you know even if you come to this chat window you can mention you want to speak to the admissions counselor nidhi or if you call us directly on our number you can mention my name and contact number and probably I can also help you guys with relevant scholarships or discounts, which uh, we have for our interested candidates. Um, and of course, you can mention, you know, whoever you speak to, you can mention that you attended a webinar with us or you watched this video on YouTube and uh, you can ask for relevant discounts. All right. Uh, so again, this is my number. Just make a note of it. It is 89713499934. Just in case if I miss a call, you can always drop me a text on WhatsApp. All right, guys. Thank you so much for your time. I, I'm, I'm sure I have been able to explain the details. And, uh, you know, I hope there are no questions. Thank you so much.